a chance to review the agenda. Any uh, proposed changes? Okay. Everyone agree? Yes. yes. Okay. Approved by consensus. Um, comments from the chair? Well, the comments I have, I think, are going to be taken up in items five and six. So, I, I get uh, one thing we probably should talk about is the next meeting that we have planned, and we can talk about this again at the end of our meeting. See whether we need to have a meeting is basically what I'm getting at. Um, we're not going to meet on Memorial Day, so I think at the end of this discussion tonight, we can decide if we feel we need to have a placement meeting there or we can just cancel that meeting and not reschedule it. So I wanted to mention that. Um, so that's it for my comments from the chair. Uh, <laughs> unless there's anything else anyone else wants to add. No. Okay. General business comments from somebody from the public about something not on the agenda. There is no one from the public present, so we will move forward to item five. I think it should have. I did go to the historic preservation. Okay, yeah. We should go Tuesday. Alright, it was out in the shield, so I don't know how his health is now. And we couldn't muster a corn. So then Huffman and Bob Shield and I were the only people there. <laughs> Everybody else left. But, uh, is Bob a member of the committee? No, but he's pushing his arms. Okay, so three non members. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a discussion? Well, I. No. <laughs> not my favorite people to discuss things with. Odd, odd things happen. You have to do. Well, we'll wait the update after the next meeting. Hopefully, Eric will recover quickly. Yeah, we'll have a meeting uh, next week. So back to item five, update from the city council presentation. Mike, do you want to start us off? Sure, I can give a quick update on that. Um, so first I just want to say Mike did a fabulous PowerPoint explaining what we've done in the last year, what we're working, you know, what we do generally, what we're hoping to do, and where we would like their support. So helpful for framing everything for them, because there is a lot. Yep, if a lot of new if people. If you're a new counselor, I think there's a lot of different committees to orient yourself to. Yeah, and just to, to get, um, to make sure the council's aware of some of the things that they, you know, just, they make assumptions and just don't completely understand. Um, you know, Kevin was in the audience, was kind of watching the reaction of counselors on certain things, and some of them were kind of surprised to see that, you know, we were a department of four people, including me. You know, it's like, oh, the planning department's just four people. That's it. So, um, so there was those types of things. I thought it was, I thought it was good. I was tired, so afterwards, I, the next day, I had to go and just ask Bill. I'm like, that went okay, right? <laughs> he was like, yeah, it went fine. So, um, but I thought it went good. Gave uh, just kind of an update generally on what the department does what the Planning Commission was doing, and then we kind of kicked off a little bit of what we wanted, although we kind of had to pull back a little bit because the council is doing a strategic planning process this week to work on what they would like to accomplish as, a, as the new council. I think it was perfect timing. We presented yep. the, the desire to prioritize the city plan, and by prioritize, I mean allocate staff resources for working on the city plan and gave a proposal of how we would start to do that um, right before their strategic yep. goal meeting. So hopefully that will go well for us. Yeah, I think it was good. Uh, it was certainly good timing, but we 
didn't get the opportunity to kind of get a decision back from them that said, yeah, go for it because they're doing their more strategic work this week and next week and hopefully um, in a couple of weeks. Games. Yeah, I think, I think we had a pretty good guess as to where people were leaning and what they wanted. So uh, I think they'll see this as a great opportunity, not just for the, the city plan process, but just for all of their goals because they really want to, you know, different counselors have different ideas of what they would like to do, but all of them kind of tie back to the city plan being an opportunity to roll those out and explain how we're going to accomplish the goal. So, so yeah, I thought I thought it went really well. Um, and um, maybe it's a good segue into item six. Now Sounds like a good segue. Update on the city plan. So. Mike did a lot of the talking, but I did elbow my way in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Mike was explaining the process that we were envisioning for kicking off the city plan, and I um, fleshed that out a little bit more, and also uh, stressed the amount of work that Mike does for us <coughs> and their how their support would be really important in ensuring that he would have adequate time to work on this endeavor. So it was, it was mostly bolstering the presentation that he provided, but then also elaborating a little bit more about uh, the city plan kick-out process. Any counselors comment on city plans in general or in particular? I bet they don't know a thing about it. Some of them don't. We didn't get into any of the substance. Yeah. yeah, we didn't didn't get too much into the substance, but there were I mean there were a couple of them that were here from last year's reapproval. So Ashley and Ann and and Rosie and Jack McCullough was on the housing committee, so he's familiar with the plan. But yeah, so I think everybody's got a general familiarity, um, but none of them have been here to go through an actual readoption process. It was pretty profound last time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I, I think that this process will be educational as it unfolds. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great vehicle to have the council think about some of the broad issues that the city. So to label this, we're now talking about item six, city plan update discussion. Um, so as I mentioned, I elbowed my way to the table and introduced myself to the council and explained that we were talking about, we are kicking around this idea that we would invite representatives from the various committees, in fact, the entire committee, to come to a kickoff meeting where they can present their top, top goals and in, in a five minute presentation um, and then stay afterward and socialize, enjoy refreshments. And, and then um, kind of on the fly, I realized it would probably be useful if we had two of these meetings because we have one where everyone hears what everyone else's goals are, but maybe we can give them a chance to go back discuss amongst themselves with our own committees whether anything can be tweaked or tailored to fit dovetail a little bit more nicely with some of the other committee's goals, come back together to another all-committee meeting, um, and then we can figure out priorities from there. And I'm thinking that some of this process in the front end will help streamline later. That was my thinking. So I, I suggested that um, potentially having a second meeting to the city council, and they really like the idea. They do want us to check in with them, which makes perfect sense, and it seems like that would be a great opportunity to do that after the second all-committee meeting. So I wanted to get your feedback on 
this idea. The council was on board with the concept. It wasn't anything that we needed an official approval for. I just wanted to give them the idea of what we were looking to do. So what would happen at the second meeting? Would, it, would there be more discussion, or would it be like pitching ideas? So I think I think two things should happen. Maybe um, more discussion. We would have to structure that, and the way I framed it in the letter, which we can modify in any way we like. Uh, but I, I framed it as you could come forward and, and say your goals again, if you know if they've changed at all, but also where your committee thinks that those goals rank in terms of priority for the city goals now that you've heard what some of the other goals are. Just to give everyone a chance to see how theirs fits into the broader picture. It's possible that every committee will say our goals are the number one priority for the city um, and we'll have to do it anyway. But I thought maybe giving them the opportunity might be a useful exercise. But what do others think? I think there's some real value in everybody hearing anybody else's plans. And they're bound to vote some thought and can't predict where it would go. But yeah. So I like your idea of a second meeting. And, uh, or if, if after the first meeting, presumably there's some follow up work for them to do in that second meeting, it's a presentation of like, everything that. They've all submitted, but maybe curated in a, in a way that brings it all together to get, you know, initial feedback or I don't know what. I just don't know <coughs> if we're going to be asking too much if we want product as well as, because part of the goal of these meetings is to have people thinking conceptually without being too much attached to their work, I find that once you start actually working on something, you become it becomes harder for you to be flexible in thought process. Um, so that was one, one thought. I mean, maybe the end of the meeting could be talking about what a actual product is that they should be doing. That's my only concern with that. Otherwise, I'd say, yeah, let's do that. Well, we could make it a tentative second meeting. We can discuss the results of the first meeting amongst ourselves and decide what would be what we think would be productive. I think that makes that the idea of having something else that comes next is helpful, I think, though, for people so they're not you say we're gonna come and talk about goals, then we're gonna come back and talk about just goals again. Um, I think it's it can be that, but I think it would be helpful to have at least it doesn't have to be like a defined product or something that's done, but at least a next step, whatever that is some other planning element piece so that, we're, so that we're moving, so it feels like we're moving forward. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what that would necessarily be. Mm -hmm. So are we thinking not have the goals like necessarily stated in the first meeting? I think that's important to have it in the first meeting. It's important to have it in the first meeting? Yeah. I, I, thought I, was, I thought I was hearing that we were moving forward to maybe have to say, like, asking for them to come back with goals in the second meeting and the first one being more of... I was thinking they might revise their goals, but yeah. maybe not. Maybe that's not worth, maybe it's more confusing than helpful. Well, I mean, following up on Stephanie's, maybe the, the proposal would then be on the second meeting to revise your goals and then to start thinking about what would be some of the strategies you might use to implement those goals, just to start to get them thinking about those next steps. So it's not rehashing the same thing. It is a little bit, but we're kind of taking them to that next level, which will be, all right, now let's start thinking strategically. If you're economic development, what would you do to, you know, if your goal is to create more jobs or to create more whatever, what is it, what's your thing that you're going to do to help to move that forward? Or energy or transportation or housing. So if we want to reframe the goals piece and say, um, or maybe, uh, how about this? What if the letter says we invite you to come, I don't remember exactly the word I said, but the second paragraph, at the kickoff meeting, we ask that you are a representative, and I have some template language here, from your committee, present that committee's top three goals for the next 10 years in a five-minute presentation. So I think there's some, I put some comment bubbles here to say, you know, do we want to ask for a range of goals, three to five goals, or limited to three? 
and what do you think is the appropriate time frame? I mean, 10 years or 20 years? So I think um, based on this conversation, we could say top three goals or however many number we want to do for the next 10 years or whatever length of time we want to do, but we could say in terms of or we could use the language evolve, maintain, uh, transform, of how, we, I think we need to explain that a little bit in the letter too though, if we're gonna use that. Yeah, if we wanted to, instead of using the word goals, if we wanna pick a time frame and say, in Montpelier in 10 years, like what, what would your committee like to see different? Like pick three things that are gonna be different about Montpelier in 10 years and frame them in terms of like, what are they maintaining, evolving, or transforming something about our community? Mm -hmm. I like that because it's more what's the content and not can we work, can we make make sure it's exact goal and language that's, that feels a little more concrete. This feels like a nice what are the concepts that we're trying to get to. And then right. the second Step. meeting could be pick one of those goals or whatever you want to call them and do a five minute presentation on the strategy with measurables of how you propose we might get there and then the other committee could like to give feedback. Or just what are what are measurable targets for those? Like how will we know that that will have happened, that we will accomplish wherever you want it to change? So Mike, you've met with all the committees. Most of them. Giving them the basic idea of what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, not, 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 uh, not within this context, in, in oh. for all of them. But m most of them have heard the, the, speech. About language. Yeah, but they really haven't. I really haven't spent a lot of time kind of teaching them. I mean, we give them the idea of what we had thought about when we were going to do this two years ago. So. Well, I think that's a big part of the all community meeting is getting people in the same kind of process. And uh, I thought you won everybody over with your elephants. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, there hasn't been a lot of time to follow up with them to. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's, you've been a Who are else are deciding that? Busy guy. Yeah. But if that's the case, then I think you're going to have to carry this and say, look, this is what a city plan is. We need goals and means to get there, and we need some way to measure it. I mean, that's critical about your style of planning, which is tell me what you want, tell me how you're going to get there, and, and don't just put Yeah, there's a lot, of hand, there. a lot of hand holding to, to yeah. force people not to. You know, and that's for all of us to, to not take the easy road and just say, oh, well, we'll encourage it or we'll market it. Well, so maybe at the beginning <laughs> and the end of the first meeting, we should pull out some time for Mike and the planning commission to address <laughs> those expectations. And I also agree, I think Leslie said earlier about explaining out the way that John described it, some concrete things about what our expectations are about those goals in this letter. I think the better the better we explain in the letter, the very first letter about this, the more they're going to provide us what we want. The better we do it. Sure. Yeah. I like formulating what, what you want to, how do you want to see this city developing in your area of interest in the next ten years. And stay away from the goals that makes people So for the tedious task of editing, I'm just curious what language we want to use for getting away from top three goals. What do we want to replace it with? I think I've heard some things kicking around, but I'm not sure I know how to edit this right now. So you use some language. Yeah, um, I can 
try editing right now if you want. Uh, Sounds like educating and then asking for whatever we come up with this language for the first meeting makes sense. Then for the second meeting, asking for how they propose to implement that. Framework, whatever we were calling it. Not what what are indicators? In, yeah, okay. Yeah, what are the benchmarks? What, what was the terminology you, you used within the plan we um, to do goals and then <laughs> what, what term did you use for the things to oh. get to the goal? Yeah, we, we had strategies for the second set, and those were really kind of breaking into which I presented to council, which was into those permits, programs. Yeah. Projects, policies. So we're kind of breaking things into those. You know, how how do you actually plan to accomplish those goals? Is it through regulations? Is it through one-time projects? And I think I don't. We don't have to necessarily get into all the nuts and bolts, but we could certainly for the second meeting when we send out the second letter. I think we just. I don't think we have to describe fully how we would have the second meeting in this letter. Mm -hmm. I would think we could just go and say in the second meeting we're going to have one where we talk about the concepts of how we would implement, or we would be asking you to come in and give a presentation on how you'd implement one of your goals. And we would give them not necessarily those specific things. Would you do it through regulations? We could do, I think, more leading questions. Would you do it through regulations? Would you do it through a program? Would you do it by... Well, I think we could present that concept in the end, the first meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, ultimately, we're supposed to pull all these things together. So they need, first of all, the U.S. planning commission, this is a worthwhile endeavor, whatever their plan is, and how it would be completed. The second meeting is, are these goals incompatible, or are they compatible, or are they the same thing? You know, I can see a lot of overlap, mm -hmm. and I can see conflict. Always is, so I imagine there will be. And I'd like to know what the conflicts are between the committees. So ask them to identify goals that they see as incompatible with the one that they're advancing? Well, we have in our minutes uh, one that we hear a lot about. But Transportation and energy? No, that's so so the Housing and historical preservation needs uh, housing, which I don't think it does, but there is that point of view. So we ought to thrash it out and see whether it's real or not before we begin to have goals and conflict. And if it is real, to what extent? Instead of asking about conflict, can we ask about common ground now? Can we ask, like, how can historic preservation help housing? How can housing help no, historic preservation? I just think it's going to land on our lap. So when we get the goals, or whatever you want to call it, we're going to have to say, well, A is A and B is B, and then really we, we got to talk to these people because they're not going to work. We invite them to, to just read this in. Maybe that's a charge at the end of the first meeting. So now you've seen these other committees and what they're looking at, where you see places where you can collaborate with these other groups, or you know, how else you can pull out conflict in a more positive way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Recognizing that they all have to be in the same time together. That's the first moment for them to start thinking about what each group is trying to do and how they work together. One thought I had was for the second meeting when we talk about implementation strategies to probably better for a second letter, like what you were saying, not to try to kind of rethink the first one, but um, 
I think it might be worthwhile to try to, 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 to give the categories of implementation tools, like regulations, ones you mentioned. I think a lot of folks uh, might immediately go to regulation and think in that world, and to maybe force people to think about a variety, using a variety of tools to get to their goals, require something to be addressed in every like preset of categories that we that we pull out. So, and you know what those are, right? We already know what kind of like, broad categories is there. Yeah. So I, I think it would be a good idea to, to, to give like that kind of format and ask for feedback on those categories. So those. We could, I mean, the other thing is, depending on how we structure the meeting, I mean, we've got the presentations from the different committees, and depending on how much of the time that takes, if there are any breakout groups or whether that's maybe at a, the second meeting we work more or have a session where we have got break people into groups, that's where you can try to tell, ask people to think about things in different you know, think about how you, you know, how would you address this? If you had to address this through regulations, but now think about how you would address this through a program. Think of, think outside the box. Would, is there a program or a project that you could do to accomplish the same thing? You know, um, we can require everybody to update their windows, or we can give a tax credit to people who do that. You know, it's not a requirement, but, you know, we're doing that with the sprinklers. We had a sprinkler requirement that was you know, obviously regulatory and then we also had sprinkler tax credits to try to encourage people to do it now they eliminated the regulatory one for homes but the tax credit piece is still out there so there's still an incentive for people to go through and put in sprinklers into their homes and there's a lot of those that certain ones are have an easier time you know transportation's easy to find regulation that works for transportation and a program that works because the CIP program or replacing a bridge is a project. So there you go. We want to put in bike lanes. We set aside money and we put in a bike lane. There's no regulation. So they'll, they'll have easier, easier ones to go through, but I think some of the other ones might be more yeah, challenging. Have to do some Our process after the second meeting, they're going to have to know that the buck stops here, at least as far as passing it over to the council. And we told the council that that was that was part of my presentation last yeah. week was to let the council know that part of this is deciding who's handling what piece. Public transportation is that transportation committee, is that energy committee, is that community services. Somebody has to be responsible for planning for that and ultimately the planning commission is going to be the arbiter of those areas where there's conflict where energy committee w might want to see those old historic windows get replaced while historic preservation wants to protect them somebody's going to have to be the one and we'll make the first round of recommendations and we gave them the heads up they will be the ultimate arbiter of what our policies are going to be um, but I don't think we don't need to worry too much about because I think there's going to be few of those conflict points, but they're going to come out. Does this would it make sense for the second meeting to be more of a, like a community wide meeting rather than just? The we can committee? do anything we want. <laughs> we can have four <laughs> meetings. We can have ten meetings. I just the the two I, suggestions from the council. One was that they want they thought maybe we would benefit from a facilitator right. rather than having and us do it, and then the second one was that. Uh, there was concern that while we were working a lot with committees, we weren't doing enough to do public input. Right. Um, and whether a different, so whether there's a different a avenue for that, or this is built into this one. Right. So if the second one is more of a community-wide one, facilitated by someone like a Paul Costello. Um, I think they would ask them to tell us what kind of community input. Yeah, I mean, we can certainly ask them to explain that as part of their presentation. Yeah. Would it would it make sense to to do the? We talked about using the second means to flesh out implementation, and then for once after that meeting seems like this group will have 
a lot of information to kind of consolidate. And once we kind of put a draft together, we possibly have a public meeting on that. It's to it's say, this is what we put together from everything we've got gathered so far from the committees, and then start the public stage at that point. What about this? <laughs> I like what everyone's saying. I'm just going to reshuffle it a little bit. Do you want that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, we're bouncing off each other. It's helpful. So the first meeting, I think we kind of all, we have to fine tune it, but I think we've got the concept down. The second meeting could be inviting public and have more of a community-wide discussion about the goals for the city at that point. Then the third meeting could be developing the strategy for measuring whether those goals have been achieved in any way, and then we would have that to work with. That way we'll have the public input before we spend the time working on the strategy. One, one thing support this, that would be supportive of having a third meeting being about implementation, you yeah. give the committees longer, which could be a concern for some of the committees. Say that again? They, they would have longer between oh, yeah. coming up the goals and coming up with implementation. Yeah. Yeah. To, to do as a third we can do this as much as we I mean, I could just send an update to the council of, you know, we've decided to add in a couple extra meetings. And, but the concept that I pitched was that more process up front is probably going to help us streamline later. So I don't know if they seem supportive of that. Um, I think after we have all this information and we've identified where the conflict points are um, and how we can present what our conceptual recommendations are to the city council of priorities for the city and get their feedback before we tell everyone, okay, let's start really digging in to this. One thing I've noticed through my day job is that if people are asked kind of in the abstract to comment on something, you get like so-so feedback. But if you put like a document in front of them to respond to, oh my goodness, you get all the feedback. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can think about that, if whenever we do like, reach out to the public, giving them something to respond to. If, if our goal is to rather just kind of get a feel for things and have it be kind of um, not reactionary, maybe not put something in front of them. But I think we would get a lot more feedback. We'd probably get more um, stronger opinions if we put something in front of people. So just like some, this is something to keep in mind depending on what we want from the public. Yeah. yeah. I think we need to pull together a draft and then give it to the public. this is very much a draft. Yeah, the problem though, I, you just have to balance that with the perception that we've made our minds up already. That's the, I mean, I, having something that looks really polished can be a bit off putting, I think. And I think the amount of time it's going to take to put together a draft. I think we do need to have something, but I think if we were if we're focusing on our goals and aspirations, um, and just trying to get those ideas out to the public and start to say this is yeah. where we want to go, because ultimately we're going to have to sit down and take a lot of time to actually put together the writing of the the document. When it starts putting pen to paper and reviewing it with committees and stuff, it's going to take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, but we do want to get their input early in the process so they help to s the public helps to set the direction. If we think, oh, we're going to go over this way and they're really you know, not going to be interested in having that, that be a policy. Kirby's point is well taken. See, it's a thing may bite you, you'll pay attention. <laughs> See, it is a, it's a catch-22, though. Not, you don't, if you don't have it there, then... It's maybe not a great strategy to make people alarmed about what the planning commission's up to. <laughs> but if you put it, but if you do, were to put out a, like a proposal that looks kind of official, like you were saying, you will get the most feedback that way because people will be motivated by a concern that this is yeah. real. Um, so that's human nature where until it's real, people don't respond. Yeah. You can put out, the, you know, a lot of the committee's ideas from the first meeting and hours and say, here's what we heard, what do you like, what don't you like, and what are we missing? Yeah, that way we're not sure. starting with, sure, we should throw out any horrible ideas right away, probably, but something tells me we're not going to get too many horrible ideas and get a sense of where people's priorities are. 
How would we put that out, though? I mean, I think that's the, the piece that we've got to figure out. The devil's in the details. And we don't want to have a draft of the city plan, obviously. But we don't want to have something that's too abstract. We won't get any feedback on it all. So maybe... I mean, we're going to be working on this public document portal, for lack of a better word, um, we could use that and we just have to figure out how to present the information in a way on that, whether it's through a memo. Um, Everyone loves memos, right? <laughs> well, sorry, I'm a lawyer. I write memos. <laughs> Maybe not like memos. A, like a bullet <laughs> list of what the goals are. When you want a map, I want a memo. I want <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think the I, I think the point of having something at least that they can respond to, but not something that's fun. That makes me nervous. Having something that's like concrete. And I never practically speaking. Yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> practically speaking, we're so far from that even being possible. That's yeah, not something. Yeah, yeah. But an outline that looks real or looks like these are what the goals are. It looks like the goals will be at this stage. Something like that. Yeah, we don't. One page for a second meeting. I think we could have that from the first meeting and from something that's going to work. We could have something that people can respond to, but also say that this is a moment of where well, we can give them an outline of this is what our process is going to look like from here. We'll have these other opportunities for you to get involved, and so that they know what's coming. So it's not like a draft at the end. They don't know where it came from. But I think, I think if it's there, I think if we had, uh, even if it was just a, a one page, not, not really type, but if it was just, you know, that describes each of the committees that came up, you know, what, what ended up coming out from the Parks Committee? What came out from the Conservation Committee? This is, these were their goals, and this is what they wanted to accomplish in the next 10 years. Now what does the public think about that? Um, yeah. you know, and, and you might hear from people like Hosen says, all the Parks Committee ever cares about is Hubbard Park. We want to see parks that aren't Hubbard's Park, and we want to see parks that are in my neighborhood, and that's great. That's you know that's the input we would want to hear from the public is is don't worry about that. And if the goals for the Parks Committee were Hubbard Park, Hubbard Park, Hubbard Park, that might be a valuable thing to hear back. Is well, maybe we need to think a little less about that. I don't think that's their goal. I actually think their goal is actually the exact opposite. They are trying to get. To reach out to these other neighborhoods and as an example only. Got as an example only, yes. But I mean, it's the same idea. You know, uh, what, what transportation committee? How they prioritize? They say, look, our our big thing is to prioritize complete streets and getting and getting the bike lanes. And and if you hear more from people that says we're actually more concerned about expanding and building on our sidewalk network, or parking is the most important thing, then okay, we. We could take that under advisement. <laughs> that, um, but I think if we had just a, a brief thing for each of the committees, the public would have something to react to, to go and say, this is what we hear from the committees. What does the public think of the, the committee's ideas? What if in between, after we have sort of an initial kickoff with the, the committees, we have an opportunity, like, a one question survey that goes out that asks people, you know, what would they want to maintain, evolve, or transform, so that we collect those ideas. When we present them, it's not just the committees, it's like the mm -hmm. committees and anyone who, from the public, who can submit at any time. Um, and we can collect those in a centralized place. The last play we had some really vigorous public input. So if we can promote, you know, alternative forms, ways for people to participate that aren't necessarily meetings, which don't work for everybody. Yeah, I mean, now that I have a young child, I'm realizing why a whole demographic is missing during that hour, those two hours. <laughs> But I think the maintain, evolve, transform is a good basis to work from. Because I think a lot of the 
a lot of the comments that we heard in the zoning process, a lot of it came back to not trying to change my neighborhood. There was a lot of that yeah. main, maintain, and we don't want that to come across as being a negative thing. When you know, it's like you guys just want to change everything, it's like, well, no. Now, now this is the opportunity to go and say there. If there are things you don't want to change, that's as valuable as hearing about the things that you do want to have changed. Yeah. So. Um, Right, and be specific. Don't say you want to maintain the character of your neighborhood. Of your neighborhood. That's the most useless <laughs> thing anyone could tell us. Like, what about your neighborhood? All right, so let's see where we are. <laughs> um, the first meeting, we're going to ask the committees to have a representative give a presentation of areas that they would like to see ch maintained, evolved, or transformed, and they would limit that to three to five items. Uh, we'll also give them a little bit of an overview of how to use that language, and we'll ha I think we're going to have to do it in a letter if we want to, mm -hmm. if we want them to do that at the meeting itself. So I can take a crack at it and send it to you for editing, Mike, because I'm probably going to get something wrong. Um, and then at the end of that meeting, we'll say, okay, we're going to take what you told us today and write up summaries that we're going to send out. Or no, you think that we should just do a survey without, like, a cold one? Yeah, I mean, we can put all of that up. Yeah. what those responses were, mm -hmm. but then we can also, Same people then. can see those, but they can also just put out a cold survey with some introduction to, here's, we're creating a plan, but, right. but I don't think a whole lot necessarily. So we can do that simultaneously. How do we plan to let people know about how to do the survey? I think Front Porch Forum will get us pretty far. There's a lot of people in Front Porch Forum. I assume we could post and then we'll a link can, we'll on the. We'll send him door to door. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you were volunteered to Second. go to <laughs> 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 um, I assume we could put a link on the city website, and then we could put a front porch forum reminding people of it. Um, and yeah, and a call to a reporter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the second meeting, is that, where do we settle on for that? Are we going to do more public input there, or are we going to just take public input not in the meeting and do a second meeting and talk about strategies for getting, accomplishing Let's the goals? Talk about the second meeting after we have the first. Okay. If we but move I like towards, like, I'm sorry, I was just going to say, I, I, I like still having a second meeting for a public input, even if it's just to go and say, this is what we've heard from the survey so far, give people, a, and you know, some people, you know, give people at multiple venues to, to provide comment and still use that as an opportunity to get more. I think that the union audit plan could be good for that, by the way. Oh, really? Uh, okay, that. Okay. There's hundreds of people, maybe. I would guess. But, so it's not huge, but I don't think we're going to have. If we were worried about a very large turnout, we could do the high school or something. But um, there's like the stage there. And we could, as you mentioned, the facilitator and ask about. We go through the goals as they look like they are now and get feedback that way, like goal by goal. Or If we decide to make the same meeting about that, and have yeah. people go around with their stickers. And yeah, that's what I was just picturing. People, yeah, each committee has its own little yeah. section in each the room, and they have to convince the public that their goals are. <laughs> <laughs> so someone has to be standing there and talking about, oh yeah, these are the new things, and then there's some, mm -hmm. some sort of breakout like that. I think would be helpful. And they could start with the middle. Okay. <laughs> what 
was that other the charrettes exercise? What's that? Charrette. What is that? It's a uh, more urban design focus, I guess. That doesn't tell me much at all. So <laughs> <laughs> like trying to like more solve some sort of design problem. Oh, I'll it's send you a problem. Memo. It's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we give you, we, you get a hypothetical to start to work on, and it's supposed to start to get you thinking about how to. It, it's kind of an education slash public. You know, it helps to educate the public on. You know, uh, here's your map. How would you? Where would you put the hundred new houses? If you had to put a hundred new houses in town, where would you put them? And. And so you start forcing people into different scenarios where they've got to start to think about, you know, do we put, you know, a couple in every place or do we put them all in one place or, you know. So for our second meeting, I mean, I know Kim's opinion is that we should probably wait and see how the first meeting goes, which is a valid, valid opinion, obviously, and maybe that's what we want to do. But the other suggestions I'm hearing are um, we could invite the entire community to a big place like the Union School Auditorium and have an initial presentation about what we've learned from the survey results and how that correlates with what we've heard from the committees in the all-committee meeting. Um, give, have more of a general opportunity for people to give feedback or after that presentation, we could then say, okay, we're going to have the committees in different sections of the room, and they're going to be able to talk more about why this is something they want to see over the next 10 years, and you can go visit them. So that way, people can go from one place to another. I do think there's value in having something like that, maybe not as a second meeting, but at some point where people can wander around and, and really understand why this should happen, or why these goals are conflicting, or you know, just what are you more deep insights? If you can access any committee at one time, one stop shopping, it might be really useful. So, that being said, I don't think we have a clear direction of what we want to do for the second meeting. We can just have, we can have a tentative plan and then pivot from that, yeah. depending on if the first goes in. Really than we yeah, we could be vague and say we'll present next steps and get public input. <laughs> we think that no matter what, at some point there will be a, a, an implementation oriented meeting with the committee, right? Yeah, so that's what so the That would be the third meeting, yeah. We're still going to have a second ish public meeting and a third ish implementation meeting. Yeah, I think that's out of Yeah, I just think if um, if I can be as detailed as possible in the initial outreach, then it's going to save me mm -hmm. from having to respond to a lot of emails and phone calls because people will understand what the process is going to be. I think of that, that first letter of just being as blunt as please present your ideas at the first meeting using these three terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have three slides and three minutes. I was going to give them five minutes. Three. Isn't there a lot of committees? Quite yeah, a few. That's a question for Mike. Is yeah, I'll have to go and every time I start to write them down, I always end up with keep finding more. <laughs> I think three minutes is good. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Always transition. That puts us at like five. Right? Yeah. And they'll have to send slides ahead of time so we can have a long one. They're just they're just like going. They're on a timer. Yeah. <laughs> like this is transportation. Your energy's still talking. We're already on transportation. <laughs> we ask them to get. We'll have like an on deck thing, and they have to stand on deck. You have to slowly walk. Yeah. All right. Times, yeah. so Obviously, we're gonna put <laughs> Stephanie and John in charge yeah. of. The planners are good at planning events. Yeah. I don't think we do need a facilitator. I could be the 
MC. I give you the MC. Mm -hmm. We're all here today, folks, and then Stephanie's gonna hold you to the heart. I'm gonna switch the slide when we <laughs> When I decide to. <laughs> yeah, I hate sitting in the dark looking at a screen and some disembodied voice talking. Yeah, well, we. we uh, I don't know how you're gonna plan that. Well, it can't be this, because I agree. It can't be this. Yeah. I like your idea of somewhere else, maybe a small auditorium is a good one. Um, but those, you know, are people, so I don't like PowerPoint anyhow. That's a killer. People trying to read and some voices coming out of nowhere and they know who it is. Make sure they're standing right next to the screen. Whatever setup we have. Yeah, but then we have a little shadow. Three three slides is a good idea. Three ideas, three slides. I don't think we can get away from the PowerPoint altogether, Kim, which is I think where you're going. But Oh, I think there needs to be some visual yeah. cars. Um, Exhibits. <laughs> if you've got a presentation, if, if you've got a place where you can do presentations that set up for it, you don't have to be in the dark. I mean, you can watch any of the, you know, uh, TED, Talk. TED Talks. And, you know, they're not all standing in the dark. They're standing in the light, and they've got PowerPoints going behind them. It's just a matter of getting the lighting correct on the screen. Yeah. So where can that happen? I don't know. I mean, the facilities here. There, there might, there might be some here. I don't know what VCFA has. I don't know how good the yeah. pavilion Last Nation. presentation is. Um, I think the planning department should check this out and find <laughs> out how we can have an effective presentation. So we can be. I mean, if we want the slide to look a very specific way, we can send out one template and everyone fills in the exact same thing, or it just says committee name, one quick thought, and we can limit that. That is, so it's not like a huge paragraph on the screen. It's just two lines of text and your committee name. Uh, I, I like being able to see the speaker and have a person visible while something's going on behind him and how uh, I mean, it plays out. But I think I think the auditorium should have the lights like near the stage, so that I think we maybe make it less light. Well, you probably got a lot of negotiations for the lost nation. I don't know how all that works. So I volunteered to call venues and I haven't. So I'm wondering if someone else wants to volunteer for the job. Because it's available. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got I mean, a lot of letter writing. I, I, can't, I can't make any promises that the lighting's going to be the Kim's lighting. Well, I don't know. It sounds like there's a it pretty high fair. standard. <laughs> Mike says I've heard of such a place. No, I, well, I've, <laughs> I've seen presentations. I've been to places where they've had presentations, uh, and yeah. you're not well, standing in the dark. You would think the education department. Do you I think, think the only concern is, is it dark enough for the for you to see what's on the screen? Yeah, unless there's a place that's got a well, large screen television. Well, that I think I know what our first goal People is. People can bring their lights. Yeah. Down here and that's up there. No, I think, I think we could like we could say you're in this order. You need one person from your committee, and if this person's up, you know, they have five minutes, and then you need to be up here so they can go next. So it's sure. a quick transition. People know you're number twelve. <laughs> I just think to hold the audience's attention, you have to be able to have a good visual. That's what I'm so, do we have a projector available? I think we'd have to look at what the location is. We can get projectors, probably. We can. Yeah, we've got. The planning department has one that's now, we, I think, on loan over at uh, the senior center. Do we have a portable screen? We do, but it's not. So it depends how is, big you're looking. So at. how do we you prefer for, that isn't the there, has that stuff? There's movie night on the state lawn in the summer. How are we doing that? <laughs> that's, there's okay. the same question when we solved. Right? Right, just on, right on the state house. That's, well, yeah. No. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's the equipment that we need is for that. So I'm assuming Montpelier Alive puts that event on. So maybe just a call to Montpelier Alive could be, give us the info we need um, about the equipment we have available. Yeah. And Groberg may have yeah. some ideas. No, I mean, a projector can go onto a wall as long as it's white. Um, 
so if we have a good wall, then we don't need a screen. But well, the Union School might be perfect. They may, but I was just asking to see if we if we're flexible if we can bring our own or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the mayor might have a point of view on this subject. Yeah, it's going to be a small projector like this guy. Well, I mean, she's that's her business. Projection. <laughs> Educating people. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Projection too, but that's that's another story. That's that's our next. That's our first city goal. Okay. Is a is a presentation space. We can't do anything. So for the yeah. first meeting, we want people to yes. watch a projector, though. So we want to do, yeah. I can yeah. find a venue where that, that's possible. I think we can make it a reasonable thing to look at and keep people worried about them. Yeah. I think okay. the, the on deck thing is going to be. We'll need a second projection. Projector to say who's on deck, but <laughs> we can handle like that. Someone in the back can you count cards out to have like how much time you have left. Remember that from like law school when you have the. Does that person also have the button up next? <laughs> Place or play music. Yeah. Well, we have some fine tuning to do for our first meeting, but I think we'll manage. Um, okay, so you'll check into equipment and venue, and I think that the. Timing for this is going to be the last week in June at the earliest, because we have to give everyone enough notice. Okay. Yeah. So June or July. Yeah. See what availability is, and what day of the week and time do people think would be good? I mean, nothing's going to be perfect for everyone, so. We could do it at this time, Monday evening, at our usual time, but that might not be. I think that's the way to do it, because yeah. my schedule gets sort of cluttered on the holidays. You're meant to be retired. I know. I'll declutter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess, you know, our meeting time would be June 25th. So June 25th, or I don't have another calendar. And I'll in front keep of my fingers crossed. It's usually haying time, oh, okay. but I'll keep my yeah. fingers crossed that it. Actually, I'm supposed to be gone that week. Let's can we push it to July. Well, okay, and then sounds, July 2nd yeah. probably oh, sounds <laughs> like a, yeah, not a good day. Yeah, well, going, we're second and fourth, so I'm gone the first two weeks of July. It's July. It's July 30th. You still gone the 16th? No, I'm not. Could you just say you're I'm gone, gone the first two weeks? I'm gone the first week. So... Second or fourth Monday in July? So July 9th or 23rd. Second and fourth is not at 9th and 23rd. There's also a fifth Monday in July. Not that I think we want to push the late July. So I can't, I'll shoot for I July 23rd and then we'll yeah, see. What if we do an off week for us? What about July 16th? Oh, that is DRB. Development Review Board. Them. We'll just cancel their meeting. Yeah. Planning Commission could do know. that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so You're implementing our plan. So how about for us? July 23rd or 30th, 30th thing about well, the day. Oh, right, because the DRB the doesn't meet on the 5th, right? Yeah, nobody meets on the 5th. So. Okay, the 23rd or 30th. Thank you, Kirby. Yes. I think my term is up. Everybody's going to get reappointed. We all get, we all get kicked off the yeah, next yeah, month. Yeah. You're all getting re, you're all getting reappointed. What did we do wrong? Was there a, 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 a charter, charter 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 yeah. change? Yes, yes. Because what we've had in the past for the charter was that everyone gets appointed for two years, regardless of when you get appointed. So it's not like a seat that everyone we're going to reappoint in the June meeting. And, you know, if somebody leaves in October, they're reappointed to finish out that seat for the next year or two years or whatever's left. Well, so that's not the way the charter is written now. Is so what we have. Extended because of your charter change? Or is it up? And they're going to go through and reappoint everybody's seats. So everybody, presumably, they're going to reappoint most of everybody, I would I think. think. There's four of us in the same. Aren't we supposed to have staggered? 
Yeah, and they're going to go back and stagger everybody and have a conversation. Do we know who's up now and later? I think that, I mean, I haven't heard, but the, I know if legislature's going out, I assume they've approved our charter change. So probably in the next few weeks, the council's going to go through and reappoint because they've got to redo the DRB as well. It was really messed up. So they've got nine members of a five seat commission. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have plenty of alternates for any. Just like a house gets cluttered after a while. Got to clean it up. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing is do we want to talk about technology? in the context of this letter. It sounds like the letter itself is going to have enough to address without talking about how we're going to do file sharing. So we can do that verbally at that meeting. Presented at the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. OK. I did talk to Seth beforehand. And where we ended up um, allowed us to say Seth could go home, because I don't think uh, necessarily would have um, had a lot to go over, although I wasn't, we didn't act, ask about um, if we have any web options for public input or not, but we can follow up and ask. The, the upshot, though, was that um, Seth will create essentially a folder on the city's uh, Google Drive uh, and then give me um, edit ownership over that folder for which I can add everyone so that they can. Uh, edit it, and within it, we can create um, essentially a, a framework uh, in the form of either forms or Google Sheets for how we want uh, these different elements of the plan structure. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the part of it will be like the what, so like you know, the, the goals and maybe measurable uh, objectives. And then like the how, so actions, policies, or strategies, or whatever you want to call them, and then identify with all of those what do we need to know? You know, like is it going to cost money? Who's going to do it? Uh, when is someone going to do it? Um, is it a high priority? Is it a low priority? Right. Collect things in a sy systematic way, and then allow all the committees to have their own if they'd like, and we can just have them all funnel into a single single place so that you can see which ones are actually could be combined or um, and it, it also allows this to be totally transparent so we can allow anyone to have a view access to what's in there um, and and also um, the other part of this was to create a, essentially a site like a, a page for the plan that we could all um, control and add to and edit fairly easily and quickly. So that could be a landing page for anyone to go either to find out about what's happening or to provide input. Um, and also a place for all these other uh, documents, like the you know, economic development strategic plan that was developed or the um, all the net zero um, Montpelier plans. You know, they can all, we have one centralized place where you can go get a, a lot of that, that background information. That's great. Thanks, Jen. Um, Are there questions or thoughts, concerns about that? Because you work on this because I don't know anything about it. It sounds like you have it under control. Yeah. You can do the next meeting. You can give us a quick tutorial of how you're envisioning it working, and then we can provide that for the all committees. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just make sure we all understand it first. Yeah, we'll throw, throw some drafts around, and if anyone else wants to try to tackle that initial piece with me, let me know. Um, so here's what I see as the next steps for this. So I'm going to redraft this letter and send send it first to Mike because I'm going to be introducing the language of maintaining transport. 
one okay. involved, and I'm going to want to make sure I've described it correctly. Um, and then I will send it to the group. Um, but we're going to need the venue information before I, I send it out anyway. So I think I'm going to ask you to take a look at the letter draft when I send it to you, but also mm -hmm. if you can put together a list of all the committees we need to send it to, that would be very helpful. Kirby's going to work on finding a venue for July 23rd and 30th. Um, John's going to work on the background, the, the, the Google Drive shared doc stuff. Um, Stephanie, are you up for drafting some language for a survey? Sure. That we could all yeah. work on or take a look at at the next meeting. Um, because we're thinking about sending that out, putting making that available to the public simultaneously with our first meeting. So it doesn't need to be for our next meeting, but I just wanted to put it on your radar. Um, and I, I'm trying to think of what I kind of signed Kim, but I don't think there is anything else. I think you're doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Can you be my cheerleader? <laughs> Yeah, he's at least once the next Well, you're going to, yeah, you're going to historic <laughs> preservation. You've got a lot. Um, I think that's it. Is that is there anything else that you want to think of with this? Okay. Okay, we're going to move approval of the minutes. Okay, yeah. So next item. Yeah, there you go. Consider minutes. Item seven. Consider minutes from April 23rd. Kim just moved approval. Do we get a second for minutes? Oh. I'll second. I have a comment. John. Okay, discussion. Sorry. Kirby has a comment. Um, I don't, doesn't need to be changed really, but I just wanted to point out that it says that I had talked to Eric from uh, Stroke Preservation, and Eric wants the committee, which I interpret to mean the Head of Stroke Preservation Committee, to provide guidance for historical preservation. I don't recall Eric saying that. I don't recall saying that exactly. It may have been, I wasn't being very clear of what I was saying. But, um, so just to, just to clarify for everyone in case they have that impression. Um, well, Eric I mean, and I just talked about opportunities for historic preservation to be, you know, to that committee to be used to work with us in the future. The topic we were talking about was to address affordable housing and stuff like that. Um, Probably just some other details and make it in here. Yeah. So if you have, I don't. I don't. There doesn't need to be a change. Well, we want them to be accurate, and if there's something yeah, small, we can do. Yeah, it's a little vague as to what committee you're referring to. Um, you said to Eric. I would say it's just instead of Eric wants say, and Eric is interested in working with the planning commission going forward. Oh. That's a motion to amend this right Yeah, so, okay, we'll do that. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor of Kirby's motion? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, There's a motion to approve the minutes as well. It's still on the table. Okay. And Kim, Kim John, and John are still on the table. John's your second. <laughs> I was wondering if we knew it today. Okay. Does your your second still apply to the motion to sure. amend the minutes as it, to, to approve the minutes as amended? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. They are amended and approved. Final item is adjournment. Do I have a motion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Okay, we are adjourned. Thanks, everybody.